everyone, welcome to your working of the day. My name is Jessie Thibault and I work at CFB Halifax. Come hand for the few people. Social media platforms, the virtual fitness classes tailored to Canadian Armed Forces personnel become accessible to all. Participants who are not Canadian Armed Forces members recognize and acknowledge that their age, health, statue, and physical fitness level are unknown, and it's entirely up to each individual to assess their ability to participate in this class. Since it is preferable to consult your physician before beginning any exercise program, we invite all participants who are not Canadian Armed Forces members to consult the Get Active questionnaire of the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiology and its reference document. If you experience any pain or difficulty during the exercises presented in this video, it is recommended that you stop and consult a health care provider. If a CAF member sustained an injury during this video, please remember to fill out a TF9A. Uh, and again, if you want to share uh, with us a video or a photo of you doing the training, use the hashtag CA. FPSP Fitness or the hashtag CPP PSP FAC. Okay, so I'm gonna get started with the warm up. So I, you can see just above my post what you need for the training, but I'm just gonna tell it verbally too. So if you have any weights, um, light weights, so a dumbbell or a kettlebell, one would be perfect. Uh, you're gonna need a chair as well, a yoga mat, and a wall. Oh, I forgot to write the wall, but uh, well, a wall is pretty easy to find usually. Uh, and also if you have a little band, like the one you can see on the floor, the red one, so it's a circular one and a long one, that would be ideal, but if you don't have it, you're just gonna perform the exercise without any resistance, okay? So let's get warmed up a bit. So we're going to start with a classic little jogging just to warm up and uh, also I'm not going to be using any music. It's possible that you hear some in the background because I think another class is running at the same time, uh, but just to make sure that the sound is good. Perfect. And let's have some high knee. A few more seconds. Don't forget to move your arms. Some heel to glute. Perfect. And then I want a high knee position and I want some little pulse. So up and down, only a tiny movement. And I want you to keep the knee kind of high. If it can be above the horizontal, that's ideal. If it's here, go for here. Keep your core engaged. Keep this glute activated. And switch leg. Same thing. Tiny movement, maybe try to add a bit of speed in your pulse. Three, two, one, and done. You should feel your ex flexor a bit. I'm getting warm a bit, I'm just gonna take off this hoodie. Perfect. And we're gonna do the same thing, the little pulse with some heel to glute. So basically I wanna have my heel under my bum. I want to make sure I keep my core brace, and again, I want some little pulse. After a few seconds of this one, you should feel really the hamstring working. And also, it's a drill that you, you're working a bit your balance, right? You can place your hand on your hips. 
few more seconds. Try to be a bit faster. Switch your pulse. And switch. Same thing the other side. Find your balance first, and then your pulse. If you need a wall, I forgot to say, but you can grab a wall too. Hold up to something if you need to. A few more seconds. Want to make sure that you feel a bit the burn. Three, two, one, and done. Perfect. Just going to check if I have some people alive with me doing the training. Seven person watching. Okay, let's get started. Uh, so the way I divided my training uh, is going to be specific first for the 20 meter rushes, the sandbag lift after. I have no exercise specifically for the intermittent loaded shuttle, but I have a few as well for the drag. So we're going to do it in the order as the test goes. Some exercises are going to be a bit more technical and some are going to be a bit more intense and it's all going to be mixed all together. Okay? So for the first exercise that we're going to do, you may want to work on a slippery floor. I'm going to take off my shoes to have a, uh, my feet sliding a bit and we're going to work with some lunges in a turn and this is a movement that you can use in the 20 meter rushes um, when you're at the end of the 20 meter rushes and you want to come back okay um, it's all going to make sense um, for you because every exercise we practice after we're going to include it in the technique of the test okay so I'm going to start for a 30 second. I'm going to go in a lunge. I want to hover with my knee and slowly I want to push this knee out and rotate inside the other leg and then come back. So the goal is really to take your time, keep the back knee close to the floor and open a lot your hips before you bring the other in. As well, another thing that I want you to think of is to keep your shoulder back. So it would be easy to end up like forward like this, but the goal is really to keep your shoulder back all the time. Okay, so let's start with this one for 30 seconds in three, two, one, and go. So open. Foot flat, internally rotate, go on your toes, and come back, open, heel down, on the toes, shoulder back, halfway done, kind of in a squat position, lower the knee, shoulder back, five seconds left, three, two, one, and done. Perfect. Next one, we're going to do kind of the same thing, but I want just a little pose, so I'm going to drop my knee down and then come back into an over. So down, over, and then turn. Down, over, and then turn. Again for 30 seconds. Be ready. In three, two, one and go. Down, shoulder back, over, and then turn. Down, over, turn. Keep going, find your own rhythm. Make sure you keep your balance all the time. As I said, if your feet are uh, sticking to the floor, it's not the best. That's why I take off my shoes. Two, one, and done. Good job. Perfect. Okay, so already I'm just going to put back my shoes. We're going to perform uh, the down, up. So touch the line, down, up. Everything that we do in the test, I'm going to demo it. 
And then my focus is going to be on that turn when I get up and I want to turn. So here is the demo. So I'm going to use the end of my mat here on the floor as the line for the end of my 20 meter rushes. So a few steps, touch the line, step back, raise your hand, come back up, eye me, and then from here, I'm going to do the same movement that we just did. It was a bit hard because it was sticky with my shoes, but I think you get the idea, right? So this is the, the thing that I want you to do. We're going to do five of those with, um, so like we're going to do one repetition. Please focus on the technique and you have 20 seconds to perform one repetition. So the rest of the time, I'm just going to be resting, maybe like 10 seconds. And then I'm going to start again for five times in a row. Just a little option, if it's not uh, accessible for you, for your mobility, to place your foot in between your ends. So you're going to put your knee, and then you're going to perform your turn after. Okay? So again, I'm just going to demo it again. So turn, and then up. Try not to use your end uh, on your knee to get up. And again, if you have something a bit more slippery, my mat is very sticky, my shoes too, so it makes it a bit harder, okay? So get ready, every 20 seconds, we do one repetition for five repetitions. In three, two, one, go. Perfect, 10 seconds left. I think I'm going to be better without the mat. <laughs> and three, two, one, and go. Touch, back, and. Perfect, 10 seconds left. Two done. And three. Two, one, go, third one. And again, I'm going to take off my shoes because it's glue on the floor. I'm so limited with the space. I don't want to hit the wall when I go the other side. And go, four. And last one in 10. In three, two, one, and go. And that's it for this one. I'm just gonna stop my timer. Okay. Next one, I'm going to bring my mat back. So I think you understood uh, the purpose of the turn. Uh, most of the time, we see people that struggle uh, with the stabilization of the knee and the hip and with this turn. So that's why I wanted to show you that at first. Then um, I'm going to show you also uh, a drill that focus on the lower down in the push-up, okay? So that's something that we also commonly see, people that are not uh, able because of a lack of strength or control, uh, that they drop too fast, like if they hit their chin on the floor, okay? So for this one, I'm gonna do like a dynamic knee push-up um, for 30 seconds. It's not going to be a real push-up because my butt is going to be out. So I'm going to be starting in this position. I let myself drop. And the goal is really to uh, control the lower down. So as my end touch the floor, I can keep my butt out. Or if you have the strength, you can also have a straight line with your body. But the goal is to control the lower down. When I'm in the down position, I'm just going to push to go in a child pose. 
Then walk back and again, control down. Okay? So after we did this one, we're going to perform the same um, uh, the technique of the test, and I want you to incorporate the eccentric part um, in your brushes. Okay? So be ready for 30 seconds in three, two, one, and go. And push, down dog, walk back. Make sure that you brace your wrists. Press your finger and knuckle into the floor. As soon as your hands touch the floor, make sure that you bend your elbow. The elbow are close to your rib cage. Three, two, one, and done. Perfect. We're going to perform it the second time. And this time, you can try to be a bit less in an angle. So to have your hips a bit more in the alignment of your body, if you felt uh, you have enough strength to do it. Okay. Um, just the last thing uh, while we rest, uh, I was talking about make sure you bend your arm. Let's say if I reception and my arms are straight, it's not going to be a smooth lower down. So I really want to make sure that as soon as my hand touch, I lower in control. Okay, be ready, second time. In three, two, one, and go. So try to be a bit less um, your butt out when you do the reception, if you can. seconds left. Almost done. Three, two, one, and done. Perfect. Good. Now, so as I said, we're going to incorporate that with the technique. So again, every 20 seconds, for five repetition, I want one repetition, and I want you to focus on the lower down in your push-up. So this time I won't have to turn. So I'm gonna to touch the line first, step back, control, way down, lift the hands, and come back up without the turn. Okay? So again, if it's not about about to place your foot there, go with your knee and get up after. Okay, be ready. In three, two, one, go. Line, back, control, and up. Ten seconds left. In three, two, one, and go. And three, two, one, and go. And the last one. And ten. Five. Three, two, one, and go. Last one. Control slowly.
Perfect. So now we're going to work on the going up part. So uh, I really want you to use this leg to push forward. So those exercises that follow will really be to focus on that action, uh, leg action and also arm action to um, build your power in your first steps. Um, so the exercise can be done without any bend. If by chance you have a circular bend like mine, like big enough, and that you can attach it to something safe that won't fall on you, so I attach it low. Uh, but if you don't have that, just do the same exercise without the bend. The bend will only help you to make sure you activate your posterior chain. But you can do the same work without the bend. So, first, if you have a band, I'm just going to step in the band and place it in, um, uh, in front of my hips. So where it bends, that's the place I want my band. Okay? And I want to have enough tension because the glutes are a strong muscle. I can have a bit of tension. I could even more, but uh, I want to stay more in the center of the screen. Um, so here, for 30 seconds to start, I'm just going to sit and then do an extension very quickly. I want to make sure my core is braced and I want to make sure it's dynamic as I go up. Okay? And then I want to lower and control. So up and lower and control for 30 seconds. Be ready in 3, 2, 1, and go. When you're sitting, you're inching a bit forward. When you open your hip, I want like a straight line with your body. 10 seconds left. Two, one, and done. Okay. Next one, um, we're going to have a momentum with the legs. So, as I go up with my hips, one leg is going to go forward. Let's start with the right leg in front. So, every repetition, come back slowly and explode. Explode and leg forward. And then come back. Okay? For this one, I'm not using my hands. I'm keeping my hands on my hips. And I'm focusing on the action specifically of the glute of the back leg. Be ready in three, two, one, and go. Come back slowly and up. Up. Halfway there. Make sure you maintain this dynamic action with your hip. Nine seconds left. 
forgot to mention, uh, if it's uncomfortable for your knees, I have like tatami here, uh, but like put something under your knee to be comfortable. And three, two, one, and go, left leg in front. Think of that good activation. If anyone wrote anything, but no, that's good. So, again, five repetition, 20 seconds for one rep each time. So, I'm just gonna demo uh, another time. So, touch the line first, step back, lift your hands, and then here's the action that I was talking about. <laughs> Sorry, you lost me. I'm just going to do a bit more here. So the action I want to see, sorry about that. So it's this action, okay? So I don't want you to do many steps uh, for many of you, you're inside. So I just want like one big step and make sure that you activate your glute. Only do the side that you're, that is the most um, natural for you to do. So we did both sides. It can happen in the test, you switch leg, but most of the time people like choose one leg and they keep it all the time. So for those three reps, the leg you want, okay? So be ready. In three, two, one, and go. Touch, raise, it up. I can not really go farther. <laughs> Less than 10. And three, two, one, second one. Touch, line, raise, and then up. Two out of five. And five. Two, one, and go. Ten seconds, two more. In three, two, one, and go. And the last one in ten. everything 
have fun. So, a 30 second, I want you to perform a squat facing the wall. Okay, so when you're doing the sandbag lift, some people are struggling because they're very far. Well, their hip cannot go very low. And here, because they're far and they need to inch forward, they're going to end up using a lot of their shoulder. So, to be able to keep a good distance with your heels down and a straight back will allow you to have this position close and not work that far and use your upper body. So, this exercise is going to help you to develop the mobility to go there. Okay? So, I'm going to be facing the wall. My toes are going to be out a bit. You can take as wide as you want with your feet. And you're going to keep your palm uh, close to the wall. So you can like slide your hands on the wall. And here I want to open my knee. And I don't want to have my face uh, getting pushed into the floor. I want to go as low as I can. Okay, for 30 seconds. Maintaining your knee out, your heels down, and a straight spine. In three, two, one. And let's go. So take your time, especially in the bottom part. Brace your core. Push even more the knees out. And a last rep. And done. Good job. That's it for this one. Okay. So for the next one, I'm going to use a small weight and a chair. So my weight is going to be an 8 pound dumbbell and my chair is going to be a box. Uh, if you have a kettlebell, if you have any type of weight, it's going to be good too. Okay, so here uh, I'm going to mimic the movement of the sandbag lift, but I'm going to go sit. So I'm going to sit. It's like I'm picking up my dumbbell and then as I go up, I press it against the wall. So we're kind of training with straight arm because still some people don't have the mobility and they will have to use more their upper body. So then in between the legs, sit and up. And I don't know if you can see it, but I really want to have the momentum. My legs are helping my arms to go there. So down and push. Down and push. And we're working with a bit, um, depending on the height of your chair, we're working with the, move, the movement pattern with just a bit uh, less demand with the mobility. Okay? So let's start with the 30 second of this exercise. In three, two, one, and go. In five, four, three, two, and one, and done. Good job. Next one. We're only going to keep the arms down, and we're only going to work on the explosive part of the squat up. So up. And down and control, push the knees out. Up and push the knees out. Okay? In three, two, one, and go. So as you can see, I'm not like, my weight can be in between my legs. So my knees are wide.
Almost done. Five, four, three, two, one, and done. We can put the weight aside. And for the last one, we're going to perform the same exercise without the weight and only the arm movement. So push and straight up, push and straight up. Uh, just a little, because depending on what you were holding before, we want to have our wrist brace when we hold the bag. So you can focus on this when you have arms straight in front. You don't want to have a bend and you want to make sure that you have a certain tension in your wrist in preparation of the real test. And three, two, one, and go. So again, a dynamic go up and control the lower down. Three, two, one, and done. Perfect. Now I'm gonna put back my shoes for the last one. So it's gonna be a um, 10 back drive specific exercise. Again, if you have this set up with a bend, that would be awesome. But if you don't have it, you can only hold any weight that you want. It's just going to be important to develop the strength of keeping the bag high in the drag, which helps you a lot to um, be heavier, so to have a longer level and uh, lever and help you to pull, basically, without gaining any strength, okay? So you're going to have to hold an object or a weight and make sure that your elbow are at your shoulder height. Okay. For me, I'm going to use my band and I'm going to place it in my elbow and I want to keep this engagement pushing up. I'm going to go in my half squat position and I'm going to be walking back a few steps when I have enough tension, I'll be coming back. If you have a weight, maybe like a kettlebell, I will hold the kettlebell there, a dumbbell there, or like if you have a bar, can even be like in your elbow pit. Okay. So for 30 seconds, moving back and forth. If you only have a weight, maybe like the three step back, three step in front, and just move with the space that you have. So be ready for 30 seconds in three, two, one, and go. And I could even use a weight and the band too. I could use both. Keep the hips low. Keep the elbow high. Ten left. Two, one, and done. Good job. Slow. 
and come back. Ten seconds left. And done. Sorry, I don't have a timer, but just, just a bit of an extra there. Okay, and we're going to finish with two isometric positions. So the first one is going to be with the upper body. So take your weight or your bend, and we're going to hold the position here. Maybe try to be a bit lower with the hips if you can than what we did when we were walking back and forth. Uh, but the most important thing I want to see here is the elbow at the shoulder height. For 30 seconds, and 3, 2, 1, and go. You can interlace your finger together. If you have a weight, uh, maybe it's not possible. It's low, elbow high. Hold this halfway. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Perfect. And the last one that we're going to do is the hold low, so in between the legs with some straight arms, and it's an isometric position again. So. That would be it. Okay. In three, two, one, and go. <laughs> Just a bit more attention. Make sure that you roll your shoulder back. If you have the weight, it's okay if it's closer to you. I'm just letting my arm pass it there, so that's why it's lifting a bit lower. Ten, nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and done. Good job. So that's it for the training. I'm just going to grab my mat. I'm back. Uh, we're just going to finish with uh, how much time do we have left? Two minutes. Okay. Two minutes. Uh, I'm going to have you to use the wall for a hamstring stretch, and, we're, and then we're going to handle that. Okay, so very important to listen to yourself, uh, depending on your mobility. Uh, um, it may be not be the best one. I'm thinking about this one. Um, so I'm going to show the easier version of what I want you to do, and then I'm going to show you another option, which is more advanced. So if you don't have a 90 degree active flexion, go with this one. If you have 90 degree, just do the next one I will show you, okay? So we're gonna perform 30 seconds per leg for the easy version and one minute um, uh, against the wall for the second option. So first option, I'm gonna pull my knee toward my face. I wanna keep my knee in this position and I want to extend the more fully I can my legs without moving back my knee, okay? So that would not be good. So I want to keep my knee exactly on the same spot. So for those uh, who has um, less than 90 degree, as I said, do this one. If you have more than 90 degree, you're going to bend forward. So I'm turning kind of around the wall and I'm gonna end up in this position. And here, I'm gonna push with my head and then relax. Push with my head and I wanna have my belly that come in more closer uh, in between my legs, okay? So with the first one I, sh I show you, it's repetition. I'm gonna be timing 30 seconds to time. So you can start now. And for those who do this one, it's gonna be a minute of moving back and forth. Okay, so in three, two, one, and go. So I'm going to 
continue to speak and give more cues for the one I'm doing. So slide down, belly in, push a bit with the head, and then relax and come back up. In five seconds, switch leg for the person that do the first option and switch. Fifteen left for the second leg or to complete the minutes with this one. the workout uh, and I hope that some people were doing it at the same time than me uh, if not that's not a big deal <laughs> um, well enjoy the rest of your day everybody um, and I hope you enjoy the class